Conceptually, decision trees are not difficult to understand. And so the best way to understand them would be by just diving straight into a very simple intuitive example. Let's say we want to predict the probability that Alice goes for a run on a given day. And we have three variables or features. These three features are Alice's energy levels, the weather for the day, and how sore she's feeling. And for each of these days, we have the data on whether or not she ended up going for a run. And so we have all these observations. Red here denotes that she did not go for a run, and green denotes that she did. Now let's say that we were given a new observation. What's going to be our prediction for whether or not she goes for a run? Well, this is a very simple classification problem. It can be done in a number of different ways, like using logistic regression or neural nets. But we're going to use a decision tree. Decision trees are divide and conquer algorithms. And what that means is that it's going to split the entire data set up into smaller subsets based on the features. And then when we get given a new piece of data, like this one, it's going to tell us which subset it falls into and use that subset's probability. So let's pick a feature and split on it. Let's choose energy levels, which can be either high, medium, or low. Now, there were five observations where energy levels were high. So the decision tree groups these observations together in one branch. Remember, green means that yes, she went for a run, and red means no, she did not. So this branch consists of two yeses and three noes. Similarly, there were four observations which had an energy level of medium. So all these get grouped together in one branch also. And out of these four, she went for a run every time. So because this branch consists of all yeses, we call this a pure subset. And then finally, if energy levels are low, then we have three yeses and two noes. And so now this is a very simple decision tree. If the energy levels are high, then the probability of going for a run is 2 over 5, or 40%. If it's medium, then the probability of going for a run is 4 over 4, or 100%. And if it's low, the probability of going for a run is 3 over 5, or 60%. But we can improve the discriminatory power of our tree by adding more complexity to it. For example, this branch here is not a pure subset. It contains a mixture of both yeses and noes. And so we can split this branch even further, and this time on a different feature. Since we've already split based on energy levels, we could now split based on another feature, like weather. And so here we have it. We've now split our left branch based on weather, and so now we have two pure subsets and we don't have to split anymore. On the other hand, the middle branch was already a pure subset, and so we didn't have to split this anyway. And the third branch, we can split based on soreness. And that too now gives us pure subsets, and we're done splitting. And so the algorithm is now finished. This is what our final decision tree looks like. And so now, if we get this new piece of data and ask for a prediction, we can run through the decision tree. So energy levels are low. So we go down this branch. Weather is fair. Muscle soreness is no. So we go down this branch. And we see that there is a 100% probability that Alice is going to go for a run. And if you think about it, this decision tree is really just a collection of if-then-else statements. If energy levels are high, and if weather is fair, then the probability of Alice going for a run is 0%. Else, if energy levels are high, and weather is poor, then the probability of going for a run is 100%. Else, if energy levels are medium, then the probability of going for a run is 100%, else, and so on and so forth, all the way down. And so the fact that decision trees can be represented equivalently as if-then-else statements 
gives it a reputation for being more transparent than other machine learning techniques because it's easy to explain what's being done under the hood. And this is quite different from, say, neural networks, which we'll see later on, where fairly abstract features can be created which have no physical interpretation. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that there's nothing unique about this decision tree. For example, our decision to split first based on energy levels and then second on weather and soreness seemed totally arbitrary. We could instead have chosen to split first on weather over here and then afterwards split on energy levels. And yet this arbitrary decision determined the final structure of the decision tree that we came up with. So how do we come up with a more systematic way of deciding the order on which to split on features? Well, the aim of the game is to get to a pure subset as quickly as possible. And so that brings us to the concepts of purity and entropy.